we can hear them like yelling at each other in the hallway, and it's like, well, this is probably going to be a pretty bad show. And Dan's like, you know, what would be really funny is if we took these microphones and just hid them on top of that speaker, and then started screaming at everybody that now we don't know where the mics are, now the show can't start. This video is going to be going onto my YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, that helps people like you find videos like this. Uh, so it is appreciated. I'm going to try to spend a little bit more time on my stream uh, telling funny stories or interesting stories. And so I thought I would tell you guys about the worst casting experience I have ever uh, had, at least for a setup, okay? So um, I've been casting for, what did I? I think my first cast was when I was like 18, no, maybe 19. I'm 37 now. I've casted all over the world, lots of, uh, of different countries, lots of different production crews with different cultures. Uh, and so today I'm going to tell you the time I showed up to an event and it was it was insane how bad the setup was. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So before I explain how bad the setup is, I should probably tell you guys um, what a proper casting setup is. When I first casted a long time ago in um, places like Singapore or Italy, uh, my very early days in Korea, um, a lot of times, and if you look up online and find photos of me when I'm really young uh, and a lot skinnier, you'll find photos of me with a, a hand mic in my hand. After doing that a couple times and eventually getting a little bit more established where I can actually request, you know, how to change that, how to make it a better and more improved setup, I decided I think the best way to do this is to have a headset mic, just like the one that we have here. If you guys watch my cast and see me on camera, always I'm wearing this, okay? Uh, and the reason why is that, you know, if you're holding a hand mic, first of all, you don't have any audio feedback unless you have an in-ear piece but, you know, with a headset like this, you can really hear everything. Uh, if you're holding a hand mic, it's like you're holding a baton, like your arm gets tired. I don't want to be holding a stick for a long time. Early on, it, I think it was not after the first couple of GOMT casts. No, somewhere in there, eventually I get this headset uh, set up, right? And what I love about that, too, is my hands are free, right? So if I'm casting with Dan and maybe he doesn't see something on screen, I can point, you know, I can point with my hand, okay, look over here without having to, like, break the fourth wall or anything. Uh, if... I need to write something down, like there's an emergency. Um, I can write something down on a piece of paper, hand it to somebody that's working there, right? So this was the setup that I had for a long time. Now, one thing about esports events uh, it, it, that I've learned with production is one of the most difficult issues to get sorted with esports uh, events is audio problems. So I know we all know that NASL sound guy meme. Ben, I can't hear you. What's, what's going? What's going on? Hey, come on! But the truth is, if you're doing an event, it's really hard to have the in-game sound right. It's balanced with the caster voices. You can hear the audience, um, and a lot of times, what people don't realize is that the caster has a different type of audio than the viewer does, uh, and that's because not enough minerals. There's a lot of sounds in game that I don't need to hear. So as an example, on these rehearsal days where I go to these international events, sometimes I get there and in my headset, as we test out the sound, the in-game music will be blasting in my ears. Can you hear me? Uh, a little bit. A little bit? Not yeah, too I much. Can, I can barely hear myself. Uh, anyways, welcome to day two of the GSL Super Tournament. Day one was crazy. And now are you getting a lot of feedback in your Oh, ears? yeah. It sounds like there's a flying saucer in my head. And I'll go, whoa, 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 can you guys just turn that off? And they'll go, oh, you don't need the music? And I go, I go, no, 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 I don't need any any music in, in the game. All I need to do is hear me and hear Artosis. And maybe some game sounds. But the truth is, is that at these events, like, if I'm casting a, on a stage, I can hear inside, you know, the, the in-game sounds inside the actual arena because... It's like a concert. It's so loud at these esports events. Oh my god, it looks like Alicia is on his last legs here. He's GG! Oh, yeah. Another 2-5 MLG champion! 
This was at a KSL. If you guys remember uh, KSL, that was basically the competitor league to ASL. That was paid for uh, by Blizzard. And this was going to be kind of um, whenever ASL is not on, KSL's on. Uh, and Blizzard funded this with the idea that, okay, you always want to have two leagues up because that creates healthy competition. Um, and so, uh, you know, Dan and me had a meeting with Blizzard a year before this happened. They uh, connected us with this production company. We talked to them. Okay, now we're doing KSL, right? It's happening. We're That's finally right. here at day one, officially, of the KSL. I'm Casus with me as Artosis. This was either the first or the second season of KSL. Uh, we're, we're going to the finals. We get there. Uh, Blizzard's now flown people out. This is back when Blizzard had funding for a StarCraft. So they were like, there were people that worked at the company that were trying to make sure that everything uh, was A-OK. -okay. And, uh, you know, since they're paying for this, they'd be monitoring it. So we get down to the final venue. Now, keep in mind, I'm casting all of KSL with a headset like this on. The whole time, right? And I'm assuming that when I get to the finals, uh, this is going to be the same thing, right? So we show up there with Blizzard. We get there, and then we show up, and we see two hand mics oh, no! uh, on the table. And we went, whoa, where's, uh, where's the headset? And the producers go, oh, there's no headset for this. We didn't know you wanted that. And we go. Well, how are we gonna, how are we gonna hear ourselves? I mean, if I can't, it's kind of like singing. If I can't hear myself, it's it's hard to cast. And they said, well, you won't be able to hear yourself. But we did have a solution for in-game sounds. And they pointed to this speaker that was like seven feet tall. It was like a concert speaker. You know, when you go to a huge concert and they have these the massive speakers that actually blast the music uh, to the entire audience. They had that, like, arm's length away from us. And I go, I don't understand. They go, well, that's going to blast the in-game sounds to you while you're casting. And, and dude, it was, Blizzard's down there. They're like, what? And Tana and me are like, are you serious? And, like, you got to look at it like, okay, if I'm an airline pilot and I know how to fly airplanes... Okay, and I just assume that this cast, it's like another another day where I okay, this is a seven forty seven. I know how to I know how to fly this. Um this is like they gave me a Zeppelin. It was insane. Uh and then Blizzard's like, this is unacceptable. We can't have this. Uh and then, you know, they're like, what's too late? You know, the show's gonna start an hour. Um, there's nothing we can do. And so then they, the Blizzard guys and, and these KSL guys, the Blizzard guys start to yell at the KSL guys and start arguing. Dan and me are just sitting there like two like two kids where like the parents are fighting. You know, like we're just kind of, oh, okay, this is so awkward. They leave. And then the enemy are sitting there. And it, now, at this point in time, it's like maybe 40 minutes before the show's going to start. And and we're kind of like, all right, we're, we're probably screwed, right? There's not a lot we can do. And Dan, Dan is so funny. Dan... Turns to me, so so the, we can hear them like yelling at each other in the hallway, and it's like well, this is probably going to be a pretty bad show. And Dan's like, you know, what would be really funny is if we took these microphones and just hid them on top of that speaker, and then started screaming at everybody that now we don't know where the mics are, now the show can't start. Uh, we didn't do that, but I was laughing so hard; it was like such a great way for him to break the tension. But yeah, ultimately, we ended up casting this finals. I actually can't remember which finals it was, unfortunately, because I've casted so many finals now that like all this is just soup inside my brain. Um, but yeah, we told them to turn off this giant speaker that they wanted us to scream at each other over while we try to analyze a game uh, and just try to cast with the, uh, the hand mics. But that was by far the worst, most difficult setup I have ever had uh, to cast on. So I'm putting this out there because they're actually this has already been sorted how to do uh, audio for an esports event. Any caster should have a headset on. If you have a hand mic, you should be in the audience or you should be interviewing players. That's when a hand mic should be used. 
Yeah, sometimes you'll see these these shows I do where they like tape a mic to my face. I don't really like that either because if you watch this stream, like I clear my throat every two minutes and I don't want that going out. <coughs> <coughs> but yeah, man, that was by far my worst uh, event experience. And by the way, guys, if you like stories like this, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I can maybe do stuff like this once a week or give an opinion on an esports related topic or RTS related topic once a week. Uh, again, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment, let me know. That's it, guys. Thank you for listening to my story.